In the UK, less than 1% of university professors are black. And in STEM areas, that science, technology, engineering and mathematics, these numbers are similarly stark. As I moved into academic research, I began to notice more and more every stage that I went through that there were no senior black academics at any of the institutions and departments that I were, was a part of. That's physiologist Dr. Dane Bacano Kelly. He's a UK Research and Innovation Future Leader Fellow. He highlights a problem that we see in most UK universities. Just 6% of students are black, and the higher up the seniority ladder you go, the fewer black academics you see. It's always nice to be able to see that the path that you are trying to aspire to is possible. And one of the things that I resolved to do, having seen that there was nobody in these positions, was to decide that I wanted to be one myself. I wanted to be in that position to be able to help other individuals. And in 2021, Dane did just that. He started his own laboratory at the Cardiff hub of the UK Dementia Research Institute, where he investigates Parkinson's disease. This disorder is caused by the loss of neurons that control movement, a process of degeneration that starts decades before symptoms show themselves. Dane's lab aims to identify early signs of that degeneration by focusing on the electrical communication between neurons. It's a bit like a conversation between two people down a phone line. We have the equipment that is necessary to tap into this conversation. And by doing this, we can understand not only what is going wrong, but when it's going wrong. Dane is just one of many black physiologists in the UK who are increasing our understanding of how the body works in health and disease. Dr. Sandra Aigyapong Badu is a lecturer in the School of Sport, Exercise and Rehabilitation Sciences at the University of Birmingham, where she's using physiology to help older people live active and fulfilling lives. Older people want to be able to get up and do their shopping and they also want to be able to go out and have a cup of tea with friends and being able to develop interventions that can support them being active for longer because people are living longer and so it's important to support people to achieve that quality in the later years and so that's what I'm really really interested in and that's what drives my research. The problem with having little diversity if I can put it that way in senior academic positions will be little or no role models. It's always lovely starting up knowing that these positions are achievable and also you know that there is some support out there. There are people that um, you can approach or you can talk to in, in developing your own research ideas. But the problem goes beyond this. Lack of diversity doesn't just affect researchers, it also impacts the quality of the research itself. Dr. Priscilla Day Walsh is a research physiologist at the Quadrum Institute Bioscience, where she studies how the food we eat interacts with gut microbes and how that influences the risk of developing metabolic diseases. We know that the science that we do is not based on one population. It's actually based on a global uh, population. So we need to, to have also a global scientific population whose ideas and opinions are all put into uh, one basket, if you like. And this will influence the science that we do and the outcomes that come out from this uh, science for the benefit of the population, so the whole global population. Greater diversity is fundamental in achieving scientific excellence. The Physiological Society is committed to demonstrating diversity and ensuring true equality and inclusion.